Okay, um, hi. Uh, here is the um, best of winter 2024 that I've seen. Um, with a little surprise. We'll get to the surprise in a minute. Um, I got a package. I wasn't expecting it to be as fancy as it was, but, um, you know, based on, um, based on the company it came from, you know, it's, it's probably going to be a pretty big deal. So, um, let's get into, uh, winter 2024 favorites. Yay. Look at that. I'm going to put them all here. All right. First up, Persona 3 Reload. It was very fun. I beat it twice already. I literally have not played any other video games except for that. Um, I played Persona 3 a lot, the, like the portable one, or like a couple years ago when it came out for um, modern consoles, and I just I couldn't get into it. The gameplay was so like dated, and the voice acting was mm, not great, but I chugged along, got to the end, loved it, but wished it was better. And then basically immediately after I beat it, like they announced that it was getting remade. So great, cool. And uh, yeah, the remake is better in pretty much every way. That's all I gotta say. So Persona 3 Reload, if you love Persona or if you haven't played Persona and want to, it's probably the best one. It's the best one. I'd say Persona 5 is a better starting point, though. Because I think this one... I don't know. I don't know. This one's kind of tough to get into. So, try that if you want to. It's very good. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, but in my, um, my best of last year uh, live stream that I did, I believe I said that I didn't love Boy and the Heron. Um, and, you know, every time, every, whenever I told my friends that, they would be just like, what, what's wrong with you? It was just like, I I don't know. I just like, I like story more than animation. Sorry. But um, to combat that, I started looking through some more old Ghibli movies. Uh, the one that stuck out to me was Kiki's Delivery Service. That one was great. Um, really kind of, really kind of hits home for, uh, you know, almost 30-year-old who still hasn't really done much of his life yet. So, you know, really, really hit home for me. But, um, yeah, great movie. Not sure what else I can say about it. So, moving on. Next up, I wonder if I have it. Hold on. Um, it's here. Next up, I probably showed this off during my Christmas haul, but I watched Tampopo was fucking weird but like good and I loved it I don't really understand what the fuck the choices that led to this was but it was I I really liked it it's um it's uh like a ramen western like a western set in a Japanese ramen shop um and it's um it's a lot of vignettes, a lot more vignettes than I was anticipating. Um, but um, it's uh, it's it's just really funny. That's like the main thing is that it's just super funny. Um, you know, Criterion always comes with like booklets of essays and stuff. Uh, this one has like one big essay on the back, but then you flip it over, it's a big poster. Pretty pretty neat. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. Highly recommend. If you like just wacky, sort of surreal comedies, then definitely find this one when you can. Alright, next up we have uh, Harakiri, or Seppuku in Japan. But, um, what's the fucking guy's name? What's the guy's name that made it? He made um, Kaidan, too. I forget his name. And, of course, I'm using that as a way to help, and I'm using this to record, so I can't look up the guy's name. But, Harakiri, beautiful, beautiful movie. Um, a lot of people quote that as being the inspiration behind Spaghetti Westerns, and, yeah, yeah, I see it, totally. It's, um, I don't know how else to describe it, it's just very, like, somber, and, like, 
just a lot of there's a lot of tension especially like right as you get to like the halfway point and it's just like oh he's not just here to kill himself he's here to do something else whatever might it be hmm he's listing names of people we've seen before but they're not here anymore what's going on what's happening here but um it's good i really recommend it moving on all right little story for this one my theater which uh is a couple miles away from my apartment um they have been like under construction like upgrading their seats and everything uh they've been like adding recliners and doing all this other stuff and um they finally finished one of their first theaters and they're calling it like premium. They're calling it premium seating, which is like recliners, like surround sound speakers, 4J, 4K projections. It was dope. And of course the movie they opened it with was Dune 2. Now, I didn't love Dune 1. I saw it I was like, eh, it's pretty good. But then I like really just kind of went along and I was just like, I'm, I, I will watch Dune 2. I watch Dune 2. I'll form an opinion because it's not the whole story. I'm, I'm reserving judgment. Yeah, Dune 2 was the fucking best thing ever. I, I went and rewatched Dune 1 like as soon as it was over. It was so fucking good. Oh my god. So, um, Dune 2, especially in that 4K surround sound crazy bullshit that they did. Ooh, magnificent. Loved it. Loved every second of it. I wish that it stayed longer but i think when i went to go see it again it was like oh they've moved to the nut they've moved to another theater and now it's fucking ghostbusters frozen bullshit i don't give a shit so i didn't see ghostbusters as you can tell but um doing too highly recommend highly recommend get it on like 4k blu-ray go rent out a theater or something. It's fucking phenomenal. Now, I am a subscriber to Roger's Base. Um, he does, he, um, he did a lot of, like, Smash Bros. reaction stuff that I find interesting. Um, and then I got into One Piece, and he does way more One Piece stuff, and so it's like, oh, perfect. That's, I'll just stay subscribed then, because Smash Bros. is basically done for a while. And, um, through that, he, uh, started uploading these, um, things about uh, an anime well at the time it's a manga but it's a, so a story called solo leveling which just got an anime adaptation and i am interested in it i don't think i don't think it like gets really amazing yet it's certainly surprising it's very shocking and surprising but it's very much like a um very like this an acquired taste it's like like to basically give you like a basic story um like it's ba it's like um like portals to like magical places open up and because of that people start like gaining superpowers but you can't like grow or get better at these superpowers like once you develop them that's that's it you're done forever so you have to just use what you have with um what you get to like help you um and if these gates stay open for too long then the monsters come out of them and it's just a bad scene so it's like uh people go into them with these powers to close the gates basically it's like it's like a mini isekai kind of they're like mini isekais popping up like everywhere that people from the real world just go into, come back out of, and then say, we're done now. Let's wait for the next one to open up and hopefully we can get to the bottom of what's causing this. Um, that's like that's like the first like minute. I'm not going to say it anymore because holy shit, it is just shocking what happens in like the first and second episode, but definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Next up, a blue-eyed samurai. That's right. I saw that um, about a week ago now. Um, that that surprised me. I was not expecting that to be like anything amazing. It looked kind of like it was like oh they're just they're trying to be like um, they're trying to be get on the hype train of arcane. It's very Spider Verse esque, but no, it actually looks very um, actually looks very much 
like it's inspired by like old like Kurosawa movies and stuff like that. Very like period piece esque of like samurai stuff. It was it was very interesting. It very it got like it got like a lot of like historical stuff which I wasn't expecting. There was like a lot it's like based off like a certain period of when Japan was closed off, like right when it started. It's very interesting. Um it makes me want to go and like learn about that period cuz like they reference certain things and it's just like that I'm sure that must have happened. Like that sounds too that sounds too good to like be not true. So definitely watch that. 8 episodes all on Netflix. I think it's getting a second season. I don't know. I was a bit confused because it was like, okay, it's looking like it's all going to wrap up. I don't know why we're getting a second season. And then, like, the last ten minutes happened, and it's just like, yeah, we gotta get a second season. What the fuck? Oh my god, what is happening? So, if there's more coming, fuck yes, I'm I'm sold. Um, but, um, uh, that's, that is about, oh wait, no, 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 no. There's one more thing. There's one more thing. Do I have it in here? I do. I have it right here. I got it. Literally like two days ago. Um, it's called Goodbye Airy. It's uh, by Tatsuki Fujimoto. He's done um, Chainsaw Man and a few other like short light novels like this. Um, is fantastic. Um, like I can't really like say anything about it, but it's like basically like a love letter to cinema. Like all, like literally all of the panels are like. Um, they're all, like, shot, like, letterboxed style. It's, like, so weird. And, like, everything is just, like, so... It's just, it's, like... God, I can't... I can't say anything else, because you need to experience this for yourself. It is just that... That phenomenal. So... It, it's not as crazy as Chainsaw Man, either. It's, like... It's kind of, like, a lighthearted drama, basically. But, um... It's a good, like, I mean, look, it's, like, basically a half an hour read, but absolutely worth it. So go and get that, for sure. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. And when I opened it up, like, right away, it was just like, okay, yeah, that's, um, that's gonna be, that's gonna be important. So we're gonna, let's look at all these things. There's a little postcard or something like that of a movie that I have not seen. If anyone knows what this is, please tell me so I can watch it. But um, right now it looks like he's um, holding a seaweed gun. And that... Mm, Splatoon live action. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's just my receipt. Okay, that's that's cool. It's weird that it like came in this like fucking like MVP envelope, but oh well. We'll uh we'll slide that one right back in there. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Come, come, come on, come on. Make sure I'm not showing anything perfect. Alright, good. All right. Now, what did I get? That could be so fucking fantastical and phenomenal. Um, only uh, one of the best movies I've ever seen. The Lighthouse. Oh, God, you can see everything. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. The Lighthouse. Um, made by uh, Robert Eggers. Um, um, fucking, what's the guy's name? Robert Pattinson and um, uh, Willem Dafoe co-star um I think those are really like the only characters in that movie too there's like a couple others but they're like bit background characters um and I've been waiting to like find this it's like a collector's edition basically like I was like blown away when I first saw this and I was just like I need to get like a very 
good, very wonderful version of it. I'm not just going to buy the random Blu-ray that they just announce and just release and no one buys. But, um, oh my, oh shit, okay. My god, it's a fucking book. Jesus Christ. That's sick as fuck. That's sick as hell. Oh my god. Alright. It's literally just a book. Like, right in here, there's a DVD cover, there's pages. Where are the pages at? Good lord, huh? this is so cool. If you can't tell, this is the first thing I've ever bought from the A24 store, so obviously I'm going to share it and enjoy it. The Lighthouse, runtime 109 minutes, featurettes, commentary with director Robert Eggers, deleted scenes, okay, interesting. Oh my god. I think Yeah, I think this is it. I think this is the um it's Willem Dafoe's big speech, I think. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it. some concept art. Oh, storyboards. Yeah, that makes sense. Storyboards. David Cullen. All right. Oh, shit. This is interesting. This is like the beginning of the movie, I assume. Again, it's been a couple of years since I've seen this, because I basically refused to watch it unless it was going to be in this, like, awesome, big, special thing. So, here it is. The big, awesome, special thing. Now, this is, this is super interesting to me, because it's like, um... Because you're, like, seeing, like, what actual, like, professional storyboard artists, like, do, basically. It's, like, um, it's like, they actually, like, they show, like, okay, it's going to be, like, camera movements. It's going to be a little wobbly. Um, uh, young and old. Um, they have, uh, Winslow is one of their names. I forget what the other one name is, but in the script, they were just called Young and Old just because they were the only characters, so that's super interesting. Some more. Oh, yeah, some nice panning shots, basically. sure what the fuck this is like an overhead of like this of the lighthouse area hmm I am confused I, I don't know I don't know what any of this could be Production drawings, okay. Okay, here, so here's like some stuff of like, like art director, art direct, dar, art directors, art direction people, art directors building the stuff. Damn, that is like the most detailed thing I've ever seen, my god. I 
the scenes photography. Okay. Just on the set photos, basically. Cool, cool. Oh yeah, that's that's pretty much it then. Super cool though. All right. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, there we go. So I guess that's really it. Um, I will see you guys maybe sooner than three months. Who knows? But um, other than that, I'm gonna go rewatch this.